Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. The Sustainable Energy Authority President, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for issuing Royal Decree Number 107 of the year 2021, approving the Kingdom's accession to the Framework Agreement on the Establishment of the International Solar Alliance (ISA) Framework. Dr. Mirza said, issuance of the Royal Decree represents also the fruit of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and follow-up of legal and legislative measures. He also said that the issuance of the Royal Decree reflects the keenness of the government to enhance Bahrain's standing among advanced countries and encourage the use of renewable energy and benefit from clean sources of energy to protect the environment, conserve natural resources and reduce carbon emissions. The India-based ISA, which includes sunshine countries, aims mainly to promote the efficient consumption of solar energy to meeting their renewable energy needs. The Kingdom of Bahrain followed up with concern the developments of the armed clashes that took place in the Lebanese capital Beirut yesterday, which resulted in the death and injury of a number of people. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs stressed the need for restraint and non-escalation in order to stop the bloodshed and maintain stability and security for the Lebanese people. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that a total of 1,170,200 had taken the first dose of the vaccine. while 1,132,032 had taken the second and 389,279 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 621 with 49 recoveries, 50 registered new cases and one death. 11 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 36 are contacts of active cases, and 3 are travel-related. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. The U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said Washington is committed to the defense of Saudi Arabia. Blinken's statements were made ahead of a meeting with the Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan. Blinken said both countries share a strong partnership and the U.S. is committed to the defense of Saudi Arabia. The discussions held behind closed doors are expected to touch upon Iran, Yemen, climate change, energy and recovery from COVID-19. For his part, Prince Faisal hailed the tremendous, immense value of bilateral ties between Washington and Riyadh. Prince Faisal affirmed that the partnership was important with the U.S. The Arab coalition has intercepted and destroyed a booby-trapped drone launched by Iran-backed Houthis towards Saudi Arabia's Jazan region. Since January, Yemen's Houthis have increased their attacks on the kingdom, launching several cross-border aerial attacks on Saudi Arabia. A previous drone attack that struck King Abdullah Airport in the Saudi city of Jazan, launched by the Houthis last Friday, injured 10 people, including six Saudis, three Bangladeshis and a Sudanese. The attack caused material damage to the airport and shattered windows. And in related news, the Arab coalition said that 10 military vehicles were destroyed and over 180 were killed of Houthis in operations carried out in Yemen's Abidia district. The coalition carried out 40 operations targeting Houthis in Ma'rib's Abidia district and the villages surrounding it over the last 24 hours. Abidia has been under a Houthi siege since September 23rd, hindering movement of civilians and impeding humanitarian aid flows, including medical supplies. The coalition said the Houthis continue to ignore humanitarian laws by threatening the lives of civilians in villages and towns with missiles and sieges.
The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has announced that it will begin easing COVID-19 restrictions next Sunday, allowing gatherings and lifting some mask mandates for those who have received both vaccine doses. Masks in open spaces will no longer be mandatory for fully vaccinated people, although members of the public must still wear them in closed spaces and areas that are not monitored by the Tawakkalna Tracing app. Social distancing regulations will also be dropped and public places, transport, restaurants, cinemas and other gatherings monitored by Tawakkalna will be allowed to operate at full capacity for people who have received both vaccine doses. Other rules to be dropped include a cap on visitors to Mecca's Grand Mosque. Devotees who have received both vaccine doses will now be able to visit the mosque while wearing a mask and using the Umrah tracing application. The United Arab Emirates said it has recorded its lowest number of new daily COVID-19 cases this year. The country's National Emergency Crisis and Disaster Management Authority reported that the country registered just 104 new COVID-19 cases, 179 recoveries and one virus-related death in the last 24 hours. It is the lowest number of the newly COVID-19 cases in 2021. The UAE's COVID death toll now sits at 2,118. The Museum of Illusions in Cairo offers interactive, immersive and fun experience for children and grown-ups alike. A perfect, unusual and exciting place for all generations. The museum started as a unique project which soon became one of the fastest growing education and entertainment places with locations in more than 30 cities around the globe and continues to expand. More details of this report with Ahmed Nader from Cairo. Enter the fascinating world of illusions that will trick your reliance on your senses but also amaze you at the same time. The world that will confuse you completely but also educate you. You will be thrilled because nothing is what it seems, especially not in here at the Museum of Illusions in Cairo. The Museum of Illusions offers an intriguing visual, sensory and educational experience with a handful of new unexplored illusions. Uh, the Museum of Illusion is, uh, is a concept that we uh, franchised uh, one year ago. Um, it's basically uh, an educational and entertainment concept which people can come and take pictures. So it's tricking the eyes, uh, so you don't have to believe what you see. Um, we're focusing on uh, uh, giving the people an experience, an immersive experience and an engaging experience where they can experience something new that they never experienced in Egypt. The Museum of Illusions provides the visitors with a space suitable both for social and entertaining tours through the world of illusions prone to delight all the generations. Not only is it a place for children who love paying it a visit, but it is also a place for parents. I saw it on the internet and my little sister wanted to get here all the time and now we had free time to visit it and it's been fun already to experience all the illusions and take photos of it and it's very too funny to see it on pictures here. Yeah. Actually uh, all my friends have uh, came uh, to visit the Museum of Illusion. They told me about it. It's, it's very fantastic. It's, it's very, um, it, it's like a different, a different activity actually. Uh, uh, other than other things in Egypt, so it's very different. Uh, the concept itself, it's very new here. It's not, um, it's not uh, well known, you know. Um, so actually everyone I know they are enjoying uh, every time they, they come actually they enjoy very much the, how they, they they take pictures they enjoy their time with their friends and everything like that during the tour you should be brave enough to jump into an illusion created by the vortex tunnel that will drive you crazy and make stepping forward through a rotating cylinder seem as a great struggle and yet the surface is so stable and flat Within the museum, look closer to remember that our assumptions about the world we perceive are often nothing but a specter of illusions. There are over 70 exhibits at the Museum of Illusions. Some are uh, rooms where you can actually go and be part of the illusion, like the Ames room behind us. 
um, the vortex, for example, and others are uh, optical illusions that are on the wall where you can watch, read the description and see what makes it actually an optical illusion. We also have the infinity room over there. It's a very tiny room with a lot of mirrors in every corner and lights hanging from the ceiling, so it makes it um, look like a really big place while it's actually a very tiny room. Every corner of the Museum of Illusions is accompanied by irrational and scientific explanation that allows you to learn a whole lot of extraordinary things about our vision, our perception and the functioning of our intellect. The goal is to discover why our eyes perceive things that are incomprehensible to our brain. The Museum of Illusions in Cairo is the perfect place to be gaining experience, education and having fun with the friends and family. This is Ahmed Nader reporting for the Bahrain International Television from Cairo.